Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shonky Lab. I'm Elton, and this week we are changing things up a little bit. As, well, not as always, but as sometimes, and uh, sometimes, yeah. When was the last time you was on? I don't know. Last time I was on, I was talking about um, dodgy brothels. Uh, oh. I'm talking about when we're talking about booze. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Well, last time talking about dodgy brothels, I had Mr. Lee Metcalf as my guest producer, and he's here again today. Hurrah! Hello, 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 mate. You're right. Yeah, I'm. F- I'm fine. I'm fine. I've got my tea. Yep. No, no dodgy brothel conversations tonight. Evening, Minty. I'm looking at the chat room. I'm seeing people talk. Excellent. Oh, yes. Good. People in the chat room, thank you very much for joining us. For people new to this show, what we do, we have a chat room running live. It's on Mixler.com forward slash rogue to media and you can join in the chat room you can listen live whenever we record these and you'll find out when we're recording these either via the twitter or we have a facebook group as well so i normally stick in there around about two minutes before i go live because i'm useless like that instead of leading out during the whole day it's <laughs> yeah we're going live now so there we go it keeps everyone it keeps everyone on their toes keeps everything fresh it, yeah, well yeah exactly we, we get the people that are listening and watching Yes. And ready to, to fall into action for us. Mm, that's right. It saves you from having, um, oh, I was going to give you a, a phobia, but I have no phobia at the moment. I can't find one. I was trying to find one of fear of shocks. Oh, fear of shocks. Well, yeah, that's, well, should we explain what, what we're actually doing today? Yeah. Today, I've got Mr. Lee Metcalf to talk about phobias. And yeah. later, we will be doing bikes. Now, we're changing things up a little bit around here because I'd like to get more of these shows out and I'm struggling to get more of these shows out. I don't know why, but it, it's sometimes uh, something in my brain says, no, not now, no, not now. And it, it's causing me problems. So what I'm trying to do is change things up a little bit. Now, we're going to go for a set time limit on talking about these subjects and mm-hmm. we're going to have 45 minutes of talking about these subjects from now no no not from now no from okay. wh- when i say go when, when i say, say go. go yeah oh. I, I will light the beacons <laughs> light the torches because <laughs> because the ho- hormy phobia is a fear of shock there you go oh right okay i'm gonna yeah let's let's get into this in a minute <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain it. I had a plan and everything, and it's gone straight out the window. Uh, you knew it was. You yeah. knew it would. Yeah. So but we're going to have our pleasantries. Class this as our pleasantries now. Okay, guys? That's mm. our pleasantries. Then we say go. We've got 45 minutes on the clock. When the, the charming little jingle plays at the very end of that, that's when we stop, wrap things up, and move on to the next subject, which will be the next episode. So that's mm. how it's going to plan. It may work. It may not work. And yeah, it, it's an experiment. It's how they say a shonky lab. So yeah, we <laughs> shall see where we go anyway. So, um, oh, uh, news, news for anyone that doesn't know or hasn't listened to the black dog yet. Mm. I had to break the news to the kids today about the cat. Oh no. I had to break the news. There were some tears. Um, oh. Oh. Mostly from me. <laughs> oh, that's not good. And and from the kids and Amanda as well. So yeah, it's it. Uh, long story short, we got a cat who is eighteen ish. We got him rescued, and we think he was around about one and a half, two years old when we picked him up. And he's about eighteen now, mm. which is is pretty good for cat years, I think. Yeah, very good. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, he hasn't been run over by a, a bus or anything like that. So, you know, good thumbs up as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. he's got uh, a tumour and he's not passing his water. And so he's on pills and he's lost loads of weight. And it's just a, a bit of a downward spiral. He's an old man. He's the oldest dude in town. And mm. so, you know, it's come to that point. And so me and Amanda knew yesterday... And then we said, okay, right, we'll, we'll do it. We'll let them know today. And so we let them know today. And it was a case of, right, I need to do the dishwasher. I'm going to go and do the dishwasher. And 
disappeared and did the dishwasher. <laughs> the sound sound of plates, just the same plate being washed over and over again in the dishwasher. Yeah, that's just, right. <laughs> <laughs> Crash. These knives are really stubborn and they won't go in the same hole again and again. Oh, no. <laughs> so everything's cool at the moment now. So, mm. yeah, it, it, it'll happen and we're expecting it to happen. Everyone's happy. Everyone's good. So, you know, there's no problems at the moment, but it's, it's just the circle of life. And so, yeah, we're going through that at the moment. So don't know when it's going to happen, but it's pretty soon. It's going to be pretty soon. So, yeah. yeah, it blows and sucks at the same time. But yes. what can you do, eh? Um, yeah, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, yeah, I had, I had two cats and they, they were, they got to the ripe old age of about sort of 15, uh, and they kind of went in quick succession one after the other. And that was quite tough. So we heard yeah. one on the black dog a couple of times, didn't we? Oh, Ben. Yeah. He used to get involved. He used to jump up on the table and basically sit on the fucking microphone, little git. Mm. But yeah. So, um, yeah, black black cat and the black dog um yeah but there you go no let's not talk let's not talk about sad things and cats no that's another episode in it surely <laughs> sad things. You got, you, there's definitely sad things things yeah. that make you man blub have, oh. have you done a man blub have you done a man blub episode no we haven't no no we that was just on the uh the black dog wasn't it where oh my god i did marley and me F- flipping hell <laughs> You, you you are history's greatest monster. I, it, yeah, it turns out I am. Yeah, wow. Jesus. Yeah, why do that? Oh, oh, we've we're, Robbo's Robbo's jumping in on the old chat. And he, I think I think he's had enough of dead dead animals. He's jumping straight into cyclophobia, fear of bikes and bicycles. Oh, excellent! Ah, oh, that's <laughs> next episode. <laughs> that could be that could be the segue. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that you would have a Segway, not because those those are quite hard to ride, and I don't think they count as bikes. No, but we all we all know the story about the owner or the the bloke who designed the Segway, don't we? Go on. Oh no, no, no. Okay, right. Um, I've, I've got to get this correct. Uh, seg. Oh, hang on. Don't tell me the front of his bike fell off, and he just sort of thought, "Hang on, I've got a plan." As he went straight over the cliff. It, it, it kind of, oh no, I've just gone to the seg. They're not going to have it on their website. Basically, no. from what I remember of, of the story, the mm. designer of the Segway died when he was riding his Segway and he lost control of it and ended up going over the edge of a, a cliff. He... <laughs> so I was right. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well. What a way to go, eh? Yeah, yeah. Andy Palastri just put um put in the Daily Mail link. Um, ah, okay. Thing, the inventor. I'm, I'll I'll have a there's look. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> well, yeah, there's always one, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. a millionaire Segway takes who dies in a cliff plunge in one of his own scooters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? That could be a list. Uh, people mm. that have been killed by their own inventions. Oh, that would be funny. That's not right. Okay, chat room, look that up now. We need a list of inventors that are being killed by their own inventions. That yeah. would be amazing. How did Tesla die? Did he did he stick his fingers in a plug socket? That would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did, yeah. Probably put, put his fingers in a coil. What did he, he did that? Because there's the, Tesla the, the, and the, Edison. Yeah. And yeah. I, I always forget who created the ac and dc because there's a, uh, a vast difference yeah i think it was um oh god i think a tesla did tesla did dc and then it was ac for um edison oh, and okay he, right he was trying to prove that it wasn't going to kill anyone okay. um <laughs> it wouldn't be dangerous by electrocuting an elephant because you know you just it, have an elephant in the in the lab uh, don't you no, he actually no, he actually did a big song and dance about it. Oh, um, yeah, Tesla invented stuff. Edison sold credit, oh. but uh, yeah, but that's Andy again. Um, but no, no, yeah. So he actually killed an elephant with an electric current to the temple. Wow. Uh, um, there you go. List of inventors killed by their own inventions. There you go. Now, what do we do? <laughs> do we save this for later? 
that that does i think i think you might have to bail on the um i think you might have to bail on the uh on the bikes chat mate because there's a fucking list here <laughs> alive there's a list there's okay a- right, then. well what we'll do save that we'll andy keep that in mind you may have to drop that again later on and uh we'll see how we go and if we decide to do that or bikes <laughs> yeah Oh, it's good. It's good. It's it's all it's 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 also see also Darwin Awards or lists of entertainers who died during a performance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Let's get phobias out of the way. We need to get that out. Of the way. Yeah, yeah. Is there a phobia for for losing track of time? <laughs> 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 okay, right. Well, as I said earlier on, we've got 45 minutes to talk about phobias. Now, if people want to phone in, or you can leave comments in the chat room, because we are reading them now, as you can hear, you yep. can uh, use Skype and dial in, and I will muck around with things. And you know, just be patient, because Skype is a fickle character nowadays. It really is fickle. It used to be, press a button, you join in. Now it's, press a button, let them know that I'm going to call them back, and... Bl- yeah, it's a whole song and dance, which is an a- absolute ball ache. Sacrifice a goat, yeah. um, go up onto the roof of a church, desecrated, and shout to the gods. Turn yeah. around, Ooh. touch the ground. Yeah, yeah. All Walk that with sort of shins, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So you're more than welcome to, to Skype in and join in in the fun. I'm, mm. I'm saying fun. We haven't started yet. So anyway, right, I've got 45 minutes on the clock. I'm starting it Ready? Yes. now. No, hang on. I'm starting it now. There we go. Right, it's going. Right, right, okay. Right, cool. We're going. So, phobias. Okay. So, (laughs) what phobia do we want to talk about? Our own phobias? Or just the craziest phobias? Because I'm looking at a list that's about a mile long. Okay, well, uh, phobia. Let's, Let's first, what is a phobia? Because phobias are slightly different than just anything that you're really worried about, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's uh, kind of more than that. It, what I've got here, it says mm. a phobia is in, is an excessive and irrational fear reaction. If you have a phobia, you may experience a deep sense of dread or panic when you encounter the source of your fear. The fear mm. can be of a certain place, situation, or object. Unlike mm. general uh, anxiety disorders, a phobia is usually connected to something specific. Yes. Yeah, that sounds about right. I, I won't question. I won't question the internet on that one. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of more than a fear. It's it's clamming up. Lots of people deal with this in many many different ways, don't they? Mm. So I, I guess where we start is what have you yeah. got? What kind of phobias have you got then? Have I got? Yeah. Well, I, oh well, blimey, where do we start? Um. Well, firstly. I had I've got mild claustrophobia, not not major, but just the thought of being in enclosed spaces, especially um, after watching horrible things on on TV and in the, the news over the years. And I'm kind of like, oh, God, I'd hate to be buried underground, mm. like that kind of thing. And um, I'm just looking to see if there's a bur- uh, fear of being buried. Is there a fear of being buried? Yes, no. there is. Yeah, not just the bloody search on this site. Oh yeah, with a fucking clicking. Anyway, um, and um, also a fear of flying. That's my big one. Yeah, that is my real biggie. That ter- it terrifies me to my core. Um, and it's really it gets sometimes it can be really bad. If I'm with people, I kind of hold it in, but sometimes I get into sort of like proper clammy hand. No, you can't put me on the plane. I've got to find some other reason. Why can't I be? Can, can I be somewhere else? Yeah, and that's pretty bad. Um, and I, probably the only other fear I've got is, is, is it, well, I did have, but I'm kind of okay with it now. It used to be fear of the dark. Oh, which was, that surprises me. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 n- not so strong now. I mean, I'm I'm a yeah. It's called. A yeah. There you go. Fear of darkness. Right. Okay. And that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Andy's going. Oh, he gets over the plane thing in in business class. Yeah, because he got me. <laughs> yeah. But um. Yeah. Anyway. So. 
So one, one um, tends yeah. to happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what tends to happen when you got like you know, you know, five thousand quid's worth of flight flight attendants all over you, yeah. Champagne, um, Champagne, sir. <laughs> yes, I don't mind if I do. Oh, what I, sh- I shall have another crepe. Oh, lovely. Um, canapé, canapé. <laughs> Canapé, canapé. Yes, I'll have one of those. Um, and yeah, with the darkness one, it was it was something that was kind of strung up from um from 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 my imagination, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And then finally, my brother got old enough to start playing pranks on me, and it just made it absolutely impossible. And I couldn't move anywhere around my par- parents' house without sort of like one light on, one light off. One light on, one light off, and mm-hmm. I kind of move around the house. You could tell where I was by precisely by which two lights were on <laughs> <laughs> around the house. To the point where it actually got to the point where I stopped my my sleep cycle kind of went out the window and everything. So I used to sit up and read until and that's why I'm a night owl, I think. I used to sit up and read until like two, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then I just to the point where I just conk out, but even then the lights would still be on. And you know, I couldn't, I couldn't lock up or anything when I was older. And I was kind of like, I always had to kind of quickly run up the stairs and leave the lights on in front of where I was going to go. So I knew I was going to like lock up, go up the stairs, turn the lights off for the stairs downstairs, run up the stairs. Yeah, I was a bit of a worse. Did you go to sleep with the light on then? Most of the time, yeah. Yeah. Until I was about, I think it was until about fifteen. Yeah, yeah. It was weird. You know, I had the same sort of thing. Yeah? Really did, yeah. I know exactly where you're coming from. I had to, I didn't like the dark. I had the light on. Mm. <laughs> I had the light on until mm. I met Amanda. And <laughs> it was a case of, right, okay, I really need to grow out of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cool. That's clearly not cool. And so, yeah, yeah I, I had to learn how to sleep <laughs> in the dark. And now, flipping out, if there's a single point of light, it bugs the living crap out of me. And nowadays where you have standby lights on TVs and skyboxes and phones mm. and other things, it, mm. it really annoys me. It really does. Um, but, yeah, I used to run up the stairs, turning lights off as well. I, I yeah. do that now when I'm scared. So, yeah. so that's the last few mo- months of, uh, yeah, the Borderlands. Old, yeah, Borderlands. Borderlands was good for you. Yeah. One thing about Borderlands, I didn't tell you. I think the week before I mentioned that I had the PlayStation 3 brought down and it yes. had a massive fan in it and it, it just sounds like a, a, a 747s in my front room. Yeah. Now, the problem with that, I was watching Borderlands on the PlayStation 3. <laughs> yeah. And you got the, the, the noise of the fan just click, just going over everything. So you got to crank up the volume on the TV to hear absolutely anything. Yeah. Which just didn't help watching that <laughs> film at all. There's me pogoing in the middle of the room going, don't like this, don't like this, don't like this. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's a fear of babies crying. Cause that's, that's gotta be, that's gotta be up there. I think, isn't Google. it? Google. Here we go. Well, hold on. See, I've got, I've got, I've got this list. Yeah, I've got this list of of a complete list of phobias, and I'm trying to search. That's why when you hear that ting, that's where um my bloody goo, my Chrome is kind of going. No, there is nothing in here on this search. Ah, oh, okay. But but yeah, like so, like the very first one is ablutophobia, which is fear of washing or bathing. Right. I have. There is a fear of babies crying. It's uh, brief. Mm. Brephophobia, brephophobia. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I don't know how to pronounce stuff. So this, uh, yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be how not to pronounce shit. The podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> goodness it's not in a foreign language as well, because we'd be all over that place. Yeah, I know. How about I mean, because I'm looking at some of them now, like barrierphobia, right? What do you think that is? Barrierphobia. Fear far- of falling over a barrier. Not far off. Fear of gravity. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, I'm so scared. It's holding me to the ground. Why <laughs> does it let me go? Why would it let me fly away like I'm supposed to? Surely that's 
a, a more of a, a fear of gravity taking control of absolutely everything in your life. Well, it it kind of does, doesn't it? Otherwise, all your pens and your pants would fly away. Yeah, but <laughs> I think it's more the <laughs> shit. Gravity just got really real at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, as, as you go, as you as your fourth beer sinks down, and you go to meet the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all gravity's fault. Fucking gravity. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a fear. Of, you used to have a fear of the dark, yeah. Yes. And fear of flying. So, yes. how have you dealt with them? Um, the fear of the dark is kind of a weird one because I, I mean, you know, I've. I, I I find, you know, you kind of find that with people in the house, you can kind of force yourself through it and it doesn't really matter that much. But when I'm on my own or if I'm in, like, sometimes I've had to travel for work and go to, like, hotels and I'm, like, the only person on my own in the hotel. And that fr- that freaks me the fuck out. And when you're in a really crazy, crazy fucking hotel, like the one in... um the one I went to in Amsterdam for that, for that graphics seminar thing. Yeah. That then you, then I just don't sleep. I just don't sleep at all. I just go right through the day, I go right through the evening until I hit the day and then maybe sleep on like whatever transport I'm on. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of really hard. I mean, normally, normally for night times now I'm, I'm Okay. Because I can just kind of like, well, the kids are upstairs, Carol's upstairs, I know everything's locked. I've gone around and checked the doors like 15 times. All the curtains are drawn. I'm not seeing any moon faces at the fucking window or anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's nothing, you know, I've kind of, I've blocked everything off. So there's no way anything's in my head to kind of sit there and go, oh, you know, that'll be fine. You know, it's, I just kind of like, and then I, then I kind of switch on my phone, so I've still got a source of light, and then I'm going up the stairs. And the e- <laughs> Alan Carroll's just gone. I've got a phobia. It's called hippopotamus phobia, which is a fear of long words. <laughs> <laughs> We're here all week, ladies and gentlemen. And um, so, yeah, for me, as long as I've got a little bit of light, even if it's just my phone, yeah. I, and once I make it to bed. Sometimes if if I like Carol's out and she's out with her friends and I've gone to bed early, I'll even then I leave the curtains slightly open so because then the street lights coming through. Yeah, and that's fine. But it's like when it's completely like pitch black, and that's why and that's why I hate doing like forest holidays and shit like that because when you're looking out straight out, it's also the same reason why I don't swim out deep in in water, even though I like swimming underwater. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't like the fact that there could be something a foot away from me looking straight at me. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, I I have that thing of either seaweed. <laughs> You'd be walking out into the sea and, oh my God, what just touched my leg? And yeah. y- you have that. And it's it's a, I get a, a real panic on. Yeah. Last time I went to Spain with the kids... And we saw these tiny little fishes swimming around in the sea. Now, yeah. fishes live in the sea. It's mm. it's full of fish and other things as well. And so we're entering their domain. But for me, it's no, don't you don't need to come this close to the shore. You know, you you, you guys stay out there. There's millions of miles out there for you to to dive in. Yeah. And you know, you don't need to be around my feet. Why are you around my feet? And mm. I think one year Kimmy got a cut on her leg mm. and the fish were attracted to it and they were just nibbling. Yeah. They were nibbling on her toes and nibbling yeah. on her legs and it, it scared the bejesus out of her. And she, yeah. she refused to go back into the water. And yeah. I was, I oh, saw this, I'm going out for a swim. And certain things, I, I saw fish around me and all that. Um no, I think I'm coming back out now. It, it's just, just mm. creepy. And if you don't mm. want to be scared of that stuff, don't wear goggles. You know, you, yeah. you think, oh, I'll just go swimming out. And when a fish just wanders across your face, you're like, oh, no, thank you. See, I don't mind, I don't mind fish if I'm sort of on their level. I mean, Andy, 
um, Andy Plastides in the chat has just said that it might be Odin, Odin phobia, which is a fear of nothingness. I'm oh. not in. Yeah, the goggles, they do nothing. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, like, I mean, I've, I've swam at the Great Barrier Reef, humble brag, and I've, I've seen sharks. Uh, while in the water and not big like great whites though they're like back tips so they're only like a couple of meters and swimming with them it still doesn't bother me it's when you sort of like you get to the edge of the great barrier reef and literally it drops off and you see there's like a like a 400 500 foot drop where the light just drops off Mm. and it's like what's down there now, if I looked down there and it was all bright white and lovely and shiny and there was a big fucking 20 foot wide octopus with glaring eyes, I mean, it would disturb me, but it wouldn't shit me up. Yeah. It would just, be, oh, that's another thing. But if that self same octopus is down there and I can't see it, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're down there for a reason. <laughs> you are hiding. <laughs> Why are you hiding? <laughs> well, they could be looking up going, hello, can you not see me? And yeah, yeah oh, it's just, I, th- I think it is that fear that um, Andy put on there, oh, the fear of nothingness. That is, yeah, it, Which, it's just a bottomless void, isn't it? Yeah, the, the fear of the abyss. I mean, in some ways, maybe, but then the fact is that it's always accompanied by the fact that you're being watched from the nothingness. Mm. Is that weird existential dread? I mean, it is that whole thing. I mean, I, I, I've, I'm sure I've said it before, but you know, when you know, go on a holiday and it's and there's no light, and it's like you, you kind of wandering about. You're in uns, unsure territory, and like I say, you're just looking out of the tent, and like about a foot in front of you, where the light just suddenly stops, and it's like, so you only need to be like another foot away from that light. What is standing there? Mm. You know, and your brain just does a backflip. And like I say, I think like going back to my brother, he he, he used to capitalize on this because I don't know if you remember, but back in the sort of well, you probably weren't even born, but in the in the <laughs> very very late seventies, very late seventies, early eighties, kids would go around with these glasses, like big sort of like big old aviators, plastic aviators, which had little tiny light bulbs, okay. right in the middle, of, right in the middle of the lens that you could trigger from you can get them from joke shops right. and it's like that was fine because they look silly you know you'd have all these lights going off in your you know around your round your eyes except my brother would sort of wait at the very top or the very bottom of the stairwell with all the lights off and then blink them on and as soon as he blinked them on you know what you've suddenly got is two little red dots suddenly appear right in front of you and it's like fucking hell what's that well obviously i wasn't saying fucking hell i mean i was only like no but that would and, properly mess with you wouldn't it yeah it's like <laughs> and then and the same and the same goes with another thing he used to do which is my mum and i'm sure i said this on black dog before but my mum used to have like a polystyrene head because she she always wanted to be a hairdresser so she had she used to oh okay right now, not not she didn't just have this polystyrene head about. She wasn't like fucking Hannibal Lecter. And this is your mother. You will love her and care for her. Kiss the head. Kiss the head. Say good night to the head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, what she had was one of these polystyrene heads where you could rest a wig on it. My mum always loved sort of playing around with sort of hair dressing and stuff. So she would practice on these wigs. And so she had a couple of them. And it was, again, another one of these very 70s things. My brother would get out on them, go around with a torch and shine it up. So there's this white phobia, the white sort of featureless face just floating in the darkness. Right. Okay. Little git. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Lucky Minty has put something in the chat. Hang on. I've got to lean yep. over. It's, oh, oh, it's another long word. It's... Uh, <laughs> Should we should we do it? Try it together, Rel, and should we hold hands and try to get? Okay, I, I'm going to say, uh, thasala. Uh, no, no, that's not right. Thalassa, thalassa, thalassophobia. Thalassophobia. Yeah, the fear, fear of the sea. Yeah, go on. No, go on. You go for it. You're you better say, than me. Go on. Fear of the sea, or fear mm. of being in the ocean. 
Mm. That's probably the closest to my biggest fear, being on a boat in the middle of the sea and not seeing any land. Oh, yeah. no, I wouldn't mind that. Really? I, yeah, I, I, yeah, only for like an hour or so, but I, just, I think I'd like that. Just play a bit of Albatross by, by um, Fleetwood Mac on your boombox and just... <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> Oh, Steve Bob's trying the same jo- same gag as Alan Carroll on the chat now. Sesquipedilophobia, fear of long words. <laughs> I looked yeah. up fear of darkness and it's mm-hmm. uh, nectophobia. Nectophobia. Now that sounds, that sounds like the title of a really shit B movie, straight to video horror movie, doesn't it? There's some, there's phobophobia, which is a fear of fears. How do you get with, how do you get that and how do you deal with it? Uh, well, it's, just, it's like inception, it's, isn't it? It's fearception. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else do we have that was relevant? That well, I've got a list of uh, mm. phobias here as well. There's uh, theophobia, a fear of God. Now. Mm. It causes an irrational fear of God or religion. Mm, okay. Mm, see, see, this is where it gets a bit strange because because all the stuff we've been talking about so far is like, you know, sort of fears, but I don't think anything stops us. So do, does it mean that that's not really a phobia? What, or does, even does, though that you've got a phobia of getting on planes, you still get on planes? Yeah. I mean, does because I'm looking at I'm looking at the thing that Andy sent up, which is a phobia wiki, and yeah. it says you know, that you have sort of anxiety and you know fear of specific phobias and that trigger panic attacks and you know stuff like that. People who suffer from specific phobias so, try to avoid the entity they fear. So the people that are, are fearful mm. of open spaces, yeah, they coop themselves up. Day mm. in day out, never see the light of day, mm. or never see a, a wide open field. Mm. That kind yeah. of phobia. Yeah. I, I suppose when I think of phobias, that is the kind of cliche one I think of anyway. Yeah, I mean, so I'm just wondering whether or not what we've got counts as phobias, or whether or not it's just just a kind of mild fear of something. Um, do you know what I mean? Because like I'm reading this phobia wiki, and it just looks like something that that these phobias would actually cripple people. And I'm suddenly thinking, well, if that's the case, you know, what about you know olfactory phobia, which is a fear of smells? How the fuck do you deal with that? <laughs> you just go around holding your breath. <laughs> it's just a person with a peg on his nose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just someone going around. Yeah, it's someone going around going. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> going around just throwing shaken back everywhere <laughs> <laughs> okay i've got andy that wants to come on hang on a second uh i'm going to add him to the call let's see if this works there we go and oh. uh, there you go there you go did i vanish for a second no 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 you there you there oh, okay cool am i here can you hear me oh hello unfortunately it's... yes Ooh. yes you are <laughs> I will screw the pair of you. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, 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 my phobia of sarcastic podcast hosts. Oh, well, you're well served. You're yeah, I know. I, I'm actually doing a version therapy. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I've missed this. Ah, uh, no, you haven't. No, I really haven't. <laughs> um, just before you go, before anyone goes on in the chat, yep. um, Doreen, Doreen Kelly uh, said that she's terrified of the channel tunnel. So I don't know if that's just claustrophobia or a specific tunnel phobia. Could be a fear of going to France. Yeah, it could be fear of French people, which is understandable. I don't know if that's a phobia or just a survival instinct. <laughs> um, and, and then Alan, Alan Carroll uh, said that he had sy- syph- syphophobia. Syphophobia, which is a fear of jellyfish because they freak him out. Oh, okay. Well, is that really a phobia, though? Because... Jellyfish, I think that's a healthy fear to have, because they will fuck you up. Well, only some jellyfish will, not all jellyfish. Well, well, true, but, you know, I mean, call me a bigoted, you know, anti-jellyfish person here, but I'm just going to give them all a wide berth. Uh, yeah, assume. Oh. You, you, 
you're you're a jellyfishist. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a jellyist. You're a jellyist. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that, that's the world we've invented. Um. <laughs> right, Lee, you've so, got to look so, for fear of tunnels then. Fear of tunnels. Okay, you, you, Andy, you talk. I'll, I'll look for fear. I, I, I will talk. So, so I was just calling firstly to address your do these counters phobias, even if you do them. Mm-hmm. Uh, my understanding of the definition of a phobia is it's an irrational fear. It is you are scared of something without good reason to be scared of it. Like a fear of flying. While I totally get that, what you really want to be scared of is suddenly not flying. And mm. myself, you know, claustrophobia. There's nothing wrong with being in a confined space. It's if that confined space suddenly got smaller. Mm-hmm. But those, those are what it is. So it's, it's the irrational fears. It's, it's, I suppose, logically knowing nothing bad will happen mm. and still being convinced it will happen. Um, so for my sense, I'm claustrophobic. Um, mm. But living in London and having to interact with the underground and tubes, I, I have managed to somewhat train myself to deal with it OK. Mm. But I do still occasionally get attacks panic attacks whatever you want to call it of i cannot be here anymore yeah. um and and, and a, a slightly unfortunate on my part is uh, my girlfriend amber loves going into caves she, she loves going to caves and everything like this so nice I, I have been dragged into numerous beautiful beautiful cave places around in california and all this uh, these these deep uh, ones that have opened up and all this which for me is absolutely terrifying but you know i managed to grit my teeth and usually try and break her hand uh, as we walk through this one but i did have an instance uh, a few years ago where i was just in a room and we've been filming and there was lots of lights it was hot it was unpleasant there was lots of people in there mm. and i'd been in and out of that room for about a week and all of a sudden i was just like nope i cannot be in this room anymore mm. had to run out of it and i couldn't go back into that room since then wow mm. so yeah yeah that, that that was not fun not a fun I- experience I love the f- people that uh, go into caves and go potholing, etc., and wear the hard hats. Yeah, I'm not being oh, funny, Splunk. but if, if the <laughs> cave wants to eat you, it will eat you, and that hat is not stopping anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, just, it's, just there, it's just there to give you a full sense of security as, as, as the 20,000 million tons of rubble just collapse around your head. Yeah, just you think, spread oh, you. At least... Yeah, at least at least my head, my, at least my head is in one piece, as your entire body is squished into a small fine paste. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, just just to just to um, address the name of the tunnel phobia, uh, which uh, Lucky Minty is also sharing. Um, guess what? It's got a really complex name. Really, that surprises me. Yeah, guess what it is. Uh, Go on, take, take a guess. Tunnel phobia. No, it's just tunnel phobia. Oh, Jesus. That's it. Tunnel phobia is an anxiety of tunnels or long tunnels or irrational fears that people will get on tunnels or tunnel routes. With the discomfort part of passing through tunnels, um, not unlike claustrophobia for fear of the tunnel collapsing or fear of large amounts of body of mass above someone's head. Um, Also, also, it also ties up to one which is a bit more, um, a bit more te- technical, which is tripopophobia, which is a fear of holes. Ah, oh, no, I've I've heard of this one, and this isn't officially recognised as a phobia, although I absolutely understand. Because have you ever typed it into Google? Try because yeah, yeah if, if you type that into Google and do an image search, I guarantee the image search will make you uncomfortable. Yeah, because it says trypophobia, fear objects with holes or small holes. Um, yeah, it's not considered an official phobia, though thousands of people are reported to suffer from it. According to research, trypophobics associate holes with danger. For example, feared objects such as honeycombs, sponges, and any plants with small holes in it. Uh... Symptoms of trypophobia range from nausea to itchy skin to full-blown panic attacks. And now I'm going to do a Google search image. <laughs> now... In, in the interest of science. In the interest of Oh, fuck off. Oh, no. That, no. It, yeah, I, I think <laughs> we may be going down one where I don't like. Now, oh, I, I haven't got okay. a fear of holes, but there's there's a lot of um, photoshopped pictures of ladies with the lotus flower instead of the nipple. 
Yes, um, that's what I'm looking at now. That's just wrong. A bot, a bot, a bot. Now, oh, Slanesh watch. It's all coming back that, to me. That is a scary thing, and I refuse to look at that. That is horrible. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that, that's, yeah. That uh, messed up. No, that's just, that's just wrong. That's just so wrong on so many levels. It's just not even... Oh, when they take the lotus flower and then they just color the color the seeds inside, so it's actually white, so it looks like I just no <laughs> sick human beings. What what is that all? A no, fuck it. I'm I'm closing that off. That just... <laughs> okay. I've got tripopophobia. That's it. I've gained a new one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, th- there's one for nowadays. Xenophobia, the fear of the unknown. Wow. Well, Oh, there you go, because yeah, there you go. That's that, that's kind of a 2017 thing, really, isn't it? No, I think that might be uh, presophobia, which is a fear of a president. <laughs> I'm not even lying; that is literally listed here. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Isn't there isn't there another one like that? Which is oh god, I'm going to find it now. Yeah, there's the papaphobia, which is a fear of the Pope. <laughs> Ah, barthophobia, the fear of the depths. Ooh, can bath- yeah, like can bath- be bath- anything associated with depths, lakes, tunnels, or caves. Oh, blimey! Look at this. See, we see it may turn out that actually uh, Sarah, Lucky Minty, and Doreen actually have multiple things. So we, you know, we're doing a service here. I've got I've got one for you, Hilly. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Duetoophobia, which is the fear of Mondays. Yeah, do they have one for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as well? No, but they do have one here for 7 p.m., 5 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 10 p.m., 3 p.m., 2 p.m., and 1 p.m. Do they have one for Tuesday, 9 p.m.? Uh, I, I don't see that one. Oh, wait, yeah, but it's, it's right there. It's black dogophobia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Although it could be a subset of uh, uh, detractophobia, which is a fear of mismanagement. Oh, God, that's, that's interesting. Uh, here's one. Here's one that I may have. Uh, disposophobia mm. yeah the fear of getting rid of stuff triggers extreme hoarding Ooh, nice now that so, well, is... surely, surely that's just finding a way to excuse hoarding kind yeah. of yeah but there's there's people that actually bag up their poo and just leave it there because they can't get rid of it yeah i'm not at that stage uh... yet I'm looking forward to that stage, though. I, I like, I like, I like you added the yet at the end of that. Yeah, you know, it's just like, yeah, we know where this is going. Oh, it's totally happening, man. It, it will. I, I will find a way. Mm. On, on the chat, by the way, uh, Jack Woodgate said that he has one which is sour milk, which is repulsive. Um, he can't stand being in the same room as a bottle of sour milk, and someone even showed him a photo of a glass of sour milk on her phone, and his eyes immediately started streaming, <laughs> and he went off to be sick. <laughs> So, so I've looked it up, and it's acephobia, which is a fear of sour milk. Oh wow! And it, that's triggered over a picture. Yeah. So there you go. There you go, Jack. You've got acephobia, my friend. Hey, Ace- here's, here's a very specific one: acelapophiliophobia, right? Which is a fear of the sun vanishing. Which I don't think is really a phobia because I have to imagine if the sun was to vanish, that would be a legitimate concern. But isn't that just called night? No, it specifically says vanishing. <laughs> vanishing. Like it just suddenly poof. It's like some supervillains made it go away. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well that's um yeah, that's 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 kind of almost the plot to the Wicker Man, isn't it? Possibly. So what are some of the, the crazy ones that we find ridiculous on here? Well, there's a uh, geniophobia, which is a fear of chins. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> must be huge fans of Bruce Campbell films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they hated they hated the whole Bruce Full Sight of Runner Strictly Come Dancing. Couldn't look at it. Um, can I just see some of these? I just don't see how people can even exist or work with them. I mean, it's like there's umphalophobia, um, um, umphalophobia. There you go, which is the fear of the navel or images of the belly button. I I can get that because people have fears of feet as well, don't they? But can I just 
point out the probably the elephant in the room here in so far as everyone's got a belly button. Do you just get up in the morning and just put your hand over it? But then you'd be scared to put your hand over it. So you just not look at it. Do you not have any mirrors in the house? Maybe, do you, maybe it's always duct taped over. Yeah. Or do you do like I do, which is basically eat so much that it basically rolls over to point south towards your feet. And you just think, oh, there you go. See, job done. No one can see my navel now. Not even me. Unless I have a, <laughs> not even if I, unless I have a series of mirrors. Or maybe it's the people that are grown in Petri dishes that they don't have <laughs> belly buttons at all. Well, yeah, exactly. Maybe they're clones. Um, <laughs> but then they have them on the back of the um, have them on the back of the neck or something, won't they? Yeah, they would. I mean, You'd have to have a belly button somewhere. Would that be a belly button on your neck? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be on your belly, would it? No, and it wouldn't be a belly button. But you'd recognise it as a belly button, though, wouldn't you? It'd be a necky button. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I've I've noticed another one that I may have on here as well. Then, go on in. Gl- uh, hang on, here we go. Globophobia, the Globo. fear of balloons. Balloons, balloons. Right now, if you if you get children with balloons, and I've had that many times with parties that I host around my house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? Do you want to be? Um, do you want to be announcing this on 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 <laughs> admissible um, podcast? I can, hear, I can hear Operation U Tree starting their engines right now. No, I was going to say, yeah, they're, they're they're coming down in their special cars. They go now, then now, then now, then now, then now, then. <laughs> no, it, it's the when, when kids have balloons and they it, it's that squeaky thing. You know when people make balloon animals and you get that squeak from a balloon, and it's mm. that fear of. It's gonna pop. I can deal with a balloon popping, but I don't like the fact that I don't know when that balloon will pop. So and it's kind of anticipation. Yeah, but of oh, the but... balloon, and it's just all the, the the weird noises that they can make when they're played around with. It's just ah, ah, ah go away. That's called phonophobia, also known as ligrophobia or sonophobia, which is a fear or aversion to loud noises and tension. Um, and sudden noises. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it also it can also mean fear of voices or fear of one's own voice. So you're you're kind of low on the spectrum on that one, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play. <laughs> yeah. It, w- it wouldn't work for a podcast, definitely. No, no, no it wouldn't. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Min- Lucky Minty just said on the chat. She said the weird one that she doesn't understand is the fear of numbers. And it's well, like I'm I'm terrified to look at my bank balance. Does that count? Well, yeah, I was going to say, I, I shit myself every time I put my card over the counter and think, please go through, please go through, please go through, please go through. <laughs> and they found out this fear of button at numbers when they were sat down watching Sesame Street and that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 song came on. And it's just, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's called numerophobia, also known as arithmophobia or arithmophobia. Uh, no, yeah, it's just called it. Uh, it's just someone spelled it wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's arithmophobia or numerophobia, which is actually one of the more common phobias in the world, especially when related to specific numbers such as seven or thirteen. Ah, fear of frogs. What? Yeah, the frog stumper would love this. Fear <laughs> of bet- frogs. Rani Dap. Uh, Rani Daphobia. Rani Daphobia. Yeah, Rani Daphobia. Doesn't he the bad guy in um? <laughs> the bad guy in like Spider Man? I think doesn't he, he plays bass in the Stone Roses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or an anti an anata anatadophobia anatadophobia. That's a good one. Which is the fear that somewhere, somehow, a duck is watching you. <laughs> so you see, some of it, so one of the most disturbing things about some of these phobias that I'm hearing, yeah, is phobias are by definition it's, it's a mental characteristic, it's an irrational thing, it's something in your wiring. Hmm. But for every phobia, there is a philia. Sorry, for every phobia. So if if if, if there's someone out there who is terrified of flying mm. there is someone out there who gets off on flying 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that, so I'm saying somewhere out there is someone who really gets off on the thought that somewhere, somewhere out there is a duck watching you. <laughs> wow. You, you just, got just, 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 just little something for you to have percolating around in the old gray cells later on. <laughs> wow. I love ducks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I love the ducks to watch. <laughs> yeah. The ducks can watch me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I was, just imagine just lining up pe- breadcrumbs along your window just to get the ducks to even look in your general direction. Yeah. So, so entophobia. That, no, it, that makes sense. All I'm saying is that that, that was what I heard. <laughs> wow. So entophobia is a fear of vomiting and the fear of loss of self control. So there's mm. a philia of absolutely wanting someone to vomit. Well, that's that's kind of the 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 hard end of the BDSM thing, isn't it? Of being sort of strapped up and losing your control and having someone just you know boss you about and all that kind of stuff. It's that kind of thing, isn't it? So yeah. it's that mm-hmm. makes sense. It's kind of you know, oh, I'm going to be sick. Well, go on in. I'm telling you to be sick. Now you cannot be sick. You know, and they're getting off on being bossed about. Yeah. So I can I can I can understand that. Um hold on. Alan Wilby's put gynophobia, which is a fear of women, and he's so he's scared of his wife, so he qualifies. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she's listening to this. <laughs> well, yeah, in which case, hello, Mrs. Wilby. Um <laughs> the divorce papers will be served as per your request. Um and um yeah, Jack Woodgate said that there's another one which I looked up while you guys were talking, which is which is um, a fear of anuses. Okay. Right? And he asked the rather pertinent question, which is, how do people wipe their asses <laughs> if, they, if they have this fear? And it's I think it's called rectophobia. Wrecked them? Damn, they killed them. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> I only did it just to get that gag in. But yeah, yeah re- rectophobia, apparently. Wow. So, so scared of your own ass. So, how, how about they, that? Were they worried about it biting them or something? <laughs> or is it just looking at other people's rectums? I don't know. Maybe they've got a collection. Maybe they just go to goatsy websites and get scared. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> what about films? Have they taught you about phobias? Have you been seen anything on films and gone oh okay don't like that i know i'm terrified of michael bay (laughs) well there i mean uh, to be quite honest the one the one that immediately springs to mind because i saw it at the cinema twice and i do enjoy it but it suddenly brought up a phobia that i didn't actually know that i had to start with Uh, i say a phobia but you know i i can usually get around it but it's um the film Arachnophobia. Ah, uh, okay. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. With, yeah, with... Um, John Goodman, isn't it? Goodman and um, Bill Pullman. And it's actually it's actually a great film, but it has a showdown between Bill Pullman and a tarantula, which is frankly the size of a dog. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it's just, it just has some really full-on imagery which even to this day i've never got over where there's there's a bit where someone's been killed by one of the tiny spiders and the police are just sort of mooching around the house and um one one of the policemen um gets gets like a a, a bag of a box of um frosties out of the cupboard he's just sort of wandering around the house and he's just munching out of these frosties while everyone's looking around and it's like Oh man, that's just wrong, you know, but it's play for laughs. And as he does that, he's eating these frosties and then he puts his hand in and he lifts the frosties out and the fucking spider's right on the middle of the frosties. <laughs> and frosties. And it's dead. But even though the fact it's dead makes it even worse because he was about to eat a dead, deadly spider. Mm. And it's just like fucking hell. And then and the showdown with Bill Pullman and this horrible sort of mother spider thing. There's this shot where as it's crawling up his leg, it's crawling up his leg, he's lying on the floor and it's crawling towards him and it's actually being malevolent. It's going to kill him, you know, up close. It's kind of crawling up him. And every time it crawls up him, it starts to move towards him and he's reaching for this flamethrower thing. It, it, it keeps coming back to look at the spider and it's just like, 
I just always get this vision of this one frame of all the spider eyes just in this one big sort oh, of yes. shot. And it's just staring at him. I just like... You can you know see what? the flame flickering in the eyes, can't you? That's right. I tell you what, like I say, normally I was perfectly okay with spiders. I mean, I don't like holding them or anything. I'm just... It's not a phobia. It's just as a sort of like a mild revulsion. But I, you know, but if there's a spider in the house, I'm not going to go kill it with fire, burn the house down. And yeah. by the end of that, by the end of that film, I was going to just fucking hell. I was just going to, I was just going to burn the entire house down because I saw a money spider on the, <laughs> the roof of the car. It's like, die, you bastards, you eight legged bastards. You're going to kill us all. You know? Yeah. We got, we're into our last minute now because the buzzer is going to go off very, very soon. Is um, it? Yeah. Temple of Doom. I, I, I have a terrible fear of buzzers. <laughs> well, <laughs> good luck because you're going to be hit by one very, very soon. That scene in Temple of Doom with uh, the lady and all the insects crawling all over her, she's reaching for the lever in the mm. hole. That, yeah. Ah, that, that did it for me. Yikes! That's that's bad. Um, I was going to try and find a really naff um, uh, one. Um, oh god, there's a, there's apestimophobia. Epi- How about that? Do you know what that one is? Apestimophobia. <laughs> no. It's a fear of knowing stuff. It's a fear of knowledge. Oh wow! Now, so I, I think we as a race are kind of moving away from that. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think. I think. Yeah, there's there's whole there's whole heads of state who've got that, and they. Yeah. There's also right. there's also plenophobia, which is a fear of car washers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. There we go. The 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 buzzer is now going off. So that means. Hang on. Let me press stop. It means it's time for Elton to get up. He's got to wake up now. Wake oh. up, Elton. Wake up. There we yeah. go. So I'm afraid that is all we're going to be t- uh, speaking about phobias for. So that is it. The subject is done. Oh, no. We, we may revisit at another time later on, but tonight, phobias mm-hmm. is done. Hey. Th- this is the way it works now. Wow. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. I didn't even get... So, so, no, so... no, no more phobia talk. That's it. No. It, no. I, 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 are you afraid there's no more phobia talk, Elton? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. I was going to say about canophobia, which is a fear of something new. <laughs> <laughs> There's a format, God damn it. We've got to stick to the format. It's brand new. We've got to stick to the format now. So, okay. Well, so there, that was phobias, ladies mm. and gentlemen. I, I hope that that works for everyone. Uh, I'm hoping that the the next one, I don't know what the next episode will be. It might be bikes. It might be inventors that killed themselves. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a little discussion with the chat room and decide what they want to hear because I, I think we leave it up to the chat room to, mm. to sort that one out. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for everyone who's downloaded this, listened to this, shared it, liked it, pushed it, pushed it around on the internet for us. Uh, Lee, where can everyone find you? Down the docks, 20 quid. <laughs> 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 no, no, on the Black Dog Podcast, which is blackdogpodcast.com, iTunes, and um, in all good bookshops, and some shit ones too. Good man. And Andy, where can they find you on the internet as well? Oh, on the internet? They can usually find me in your room when the lights go off. Um, but uh, as for the internet, <laughs> I, like, I like to watch. Yeah. Um, Andy as well. Oh, my God. Oh, well, yeah. uh, uh, thank you. Uh, you can find me on, uh, what do we do now? It's the Grand Prix podcast and for one more episode of Black, uh, the um, Band of Brothers podcast because yes. we have one more to do. That's mm. correct. And then yeah. it's done. Finished. No more. Yeah. Oh, a cool. little tear. And that's it. Eye. Nowhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Okay, well, you can find me on the Black Dog Podcast, Grand Prix Podcast, and the Band of Brothers Podcast, and Chunky Lab, which you're listening to now. I would uh, recommend everyone go download all of them shows, because they're excellent. Also, Hypnagoria as well. Are there any others that we really need to push out? LSG Media as well, I quite like all that sort of stuff, so go over mm-hmm. there, check out Jim Moon stuff. Danny yep. Davies, he's got lots of stuff on the internet. He's doing lots of uh, awesome drawings, and he he completed Inktober as well. Uh, yeah, he's uh, on Instagram. Instagram. Inst- Can it. I just compliment the pair of you for your Inktober stuff, especially you, Lee? Because holy shit balls, man! Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But you know, we all take the credit. 
<laughs> can't can't rough rough shot over it. Elton on his own podcast. No, no, no Elder <laughs> stuff was fantastic as well. But and I mean this with all respect. You just knocked it out of the fucking park, mate. So go clap. Thank you. No, no, I I totally agree. Well done, well done. So okay, right. right. We'll we'll leave this one. If you are listening to this, you've enjoyed it. Please share it, like it, and do all that sort of stuff. We have a Facebook group, which is Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash shonky lab and you can join in all the fun there and put up topics if you want topics to be to uh, for us to go through this new format see how long this format actually lasts for uh yeah you can stick them all up there uh we have i know we've got patreon we've got a little um a uh, little paypal donate button on the rogue 2 site as well so if you want to pop along there and help us out buy us a coffee you never know it keeps things ticking over yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be disappointed if you don't, but it's fine. You know, lots of lovely people have helped us out at the moment, so all thumbs up to everyone that's done that for us. So thank you very much. So until next time, it just leads me to say, please leave quietly. This is a residential area. <laughs> Thank you.